Everybody, we are gonna be covering five Diablo 4 tips. These are my absolute favorite OP endgame tips. So let's kick it off with the very first one. We are gonna be looking at master working. Master working is really crazy powerful, but it is expensive. With hordes, it has made it a lot more reasonable to get gold and materials that you need and make it a lot more fun. So if we come in here to master working and we float over these, this one I've master worked everything to level 12. Some I'm still looking at resetting, but what was different is when I was leveling, I did something that I hadn't done before, but it made a huge difference all the way up. It got massive levels of power for every level I could. So if you know, when we're hunting down materials for master working, we have the Obdesite, we have the Ingolith, we have the Netheron, and these can be broken down into lower levels, but not upwards. So at first I can, I'm usually just doing tiers. Well, the first thing you're gonna enter, whether you're doing pit or you're doing hordes, you're gonna hit a level where you can only get up to site. So that allows you to go from uh, level one to level four. On the fourth level, you are gonna get that giant 25% bonus. Now, the thing that I think is really important, I didn't do a lot of, is if I do not like what that role is, if I like, let's take a look at some of these, let's see, yeah. so. On this one, I have a roll. The blue is, it has one bonus 25% to it. The yellow is two. And if it was an, there was an orange, it would have all three of my bonus 25% that happen at level four, level eight, and level 12, all into that single stat. So on this one right here, I have two into critical strike damage, which is what I wanted. I was hoping for a third, actually. And then I have that one that got to 17% movement speed. Now, if I was leveling this up for the first time and I got the movement speed, what I would do is just reset the item. So I can come over here. If I have the item, I'll just throw it in here and then I can hit this button and it'll, it'll charge me 5 million for it. It can get pricing, um, but gold is a lot better now that we're running hordes. And then we have these costs right here. So this will take it back from whatever rank it is all the way back to zero. You lose all the mats that it took to get there, but now you can reroll and have a chance to get what you really want on the piece. So doing this as I went. So as soon as I had plenty of obdesite, so as soon as I could actually grind for those, I would make sure that all of my items that I could were rolled to the level four, had that 25% boost on a thing that mattered to me. This gives you so much power to clear higher levels of hordes, clear through the highest levels of nightmare dungeons, so you're getting more experience for your glyphs. It's just, it is a crazy add of power all the way through. So as soon as I could open up Ingolith, then I did the same thing. I kept resetting these until the two choices that I had were exactly what I wanted. And so at every level, you can make sure that you are getting a way more powerful build just by doing master working correct. So this season tied hand in hand with master working is gonna be running the hordes. That is the best place to get the materials to make sure that you are maximizing your master working and getting to higher and higher levels, great gold, great gear, kind of everything other than your glyphs is gonna be done through the infernal hordes. The pits just do not pay off in the same way. So let's look at some of the top choices you can make in the hordes, because once I learned these, it made a big difference. It was the ability to jump from like, you know, 400, 300, 400 in ether to 900 plus. I mean, I've broken thousand numerous times. It is just a crazy difference. If you go from like 300 to a thousand, it's like running three hordes for run run. It's and the time doesn't change. So anything you can do to speed it up makes a big difference. So I made this chart for one of our other videos, but I just want to quickly go through the choose side. The best choices are here. These are the ones that really do add up and you can lean into them as much as you want. They are going to add a lot to your game. So first summon Hellborn. Hell, anything that says Hellborn is generally worth picking. It seems to be a very dominant choice. The only other thing that I consider to be a little bit higher in the mix, and this is in rank order. So I try to get these first, then these. This unlocks Hellborns at all. And so then all the benefit bonuses down here for Hellborns are gonna matter. This right here increases the number of events that occur. So it can bring a lot more Hellborn because it takes the cost of how many monsters you have to kill to load an event, to cause an event to spawn, uh, and it cuts it in half. So you're doubling the amount of events you get for the same kills. Next, we're looking at just adding an extra Hellborn and getting more ether for it. So you get, instead of the two Hellborn, you just get one extra. I think I've had this up to four for sure. I don't know if I've ever had it up to five, but if you get a choice to do that, that is probably the best benefit you could do. Then we have the Hellborn damage increase. And again, more points uh, for each of the Hellborns. And that's for each individual Hellborn. So you can see how that starts to stack like crazy. So, and this last one is one that I, I'm a little on the fence right now. I've been testing even more. So I wouldn't worry about that as much, but it's, it's a better ad than a lot of them. And we'll go through the ones that definitely not to do, but. The elites are doubled. So the elites are the things that come out of the black sack and there's a big, there's like two types. 
and you kill them, this gives you more ether and it doubles the chance, so they double up. So it's it's adding more per and then doubling the chance. That is a nice add, but these are way more valuable to you. Then after that, if you are choosing the elite doubling, then anything else that boosts elites is still gonna be better than most things. And then things that boost you. So the things that boost you, there is a, a thing that speeds you up. It'll let you go faster every time you collect ether. There is a thing that will let you have infinite resource. And then there is a invigorating Hellborn, which is again, probably now that I'm looking at this chart, I'd probably switch that up. I would be more likely to take invigorating Hellborn instead of the elite double and make that my top list. So everything Hellborn and exalted hordes is gonna be your wins. But look for those. Know your build, though. So sometimes speeding up doesn't do anything for you. Having unlimited resource does nothing for you. So do not worry about those. Then these are just big time sinks. We're going to have the Summon Lords, which they just have a lot of life, especially if you're pushing higher tiers. They just take a long time to get like an extra three for when they die. The Stalking Devil is the, the burning butcher. It's cool. It's interesting. Like the first time it shows up, it, I think it's way more exciting when it shows up randomly. But it's a it's a crap option because it gives you 25, but it wastes a lot of time. It seems to stop all events from occurring, so you're not loading any more events. And it can take half your run just to take it down. So this is really not worth it. I don't think the 25 is worth it. It'd be much better to get more Hellborn involved. Teaming Masses just loads the Lord, so same issue. Lords have lots of life. Next is these options for like 15 points to do something to the Fell Lords. Those are the bosses at the end that you face. Not worth the 15 points. Just there's any other options better. If there is nothing here, like go at, I mean, fine, but I take this over these three for sure. And then anything's boosting soul spires. Soul spires are a big waste of time. You stand in a circle as you get better and you're loading events or you're using this exalted hordes, events are loading like crazy and you're stuck in a damn circle. So I would totally avoid these if I can. Okay, so that takes me to the next end game tip. This was really nice. I didn't really know my first class when I went through. I wasn't really sure. There's a lot going on. The Infernal Hordes come online in World Tier 3. Are they worth it? You still need the Nightmare Dungeons. You don't get glyphs in the Hordes. Where You know you still have to get those and level them. You can still only level them Nightmare Dungeons. What should I do with the pit? There was lots of questions, but I have narrowed it down to a strategy that has been very good. It feels good. It's a clean kind of end game and starts to just give me like, this is what I'm going to do when I get there. So Infernal Hordes are insane for leveling. They are just incredible. I think it's like if I do one horde, I was getting like multiple levels. And if I did Nightmare Dungeon, it would take like two or three to get a level. And so it's just so much faster. But you do need that glyph. So what I finally got to just kind of watching other people figure it out and what I like the most is I like when I get into the world tier is in world tier four to go get my glyphs. And whether that's running hell ties to get them, but they do drop more often in Nightmare Dungeons. I can start doing my Nightmare Dungeon runs. I can grab the glyphs that I need, make sure that I have what I need for my build. And then while I'm leveling in an, an Infernal Hordes, I can at least slot them. They aren't 15, so they don't have that higher radius. And I'll eventually have to go back and do that. But I can just run through Infernal Hordes, get all of my Paragon points, even take it all the way to the end, and then come back and just blitz through Nightmare Dungeons because I'm going to be way more powerful. If I've done this correctly, I'm also masterworking very well and just the crushing the hordes and leveling insanely, then I can come back and do the highest level of, of Nightmare Dungeon, so I'm getting way more glyph experience, and I don't really have to worry about the leveling portion, so I can just blitz through things. So clear the objectives and just keep moving. I don't have to clear all the mobs, I don't have to take down every like, little side path. If you are still leveling, the one recommendation I do have is that any of the cursed events, they're just so valuable in how much experience you get they are worth stopping and trying for. So grab the shrines, grab the chest, grab the weird pots of healing. If they're cursed, then it's very much worth your time to just clear the wave after wave and get a ton of experience and continue on. Now, if you're already pretty much end game, or you're mostly 100 or whatever, that might not matter because you might be doing a ton of these and then you can just blitz through and even save that time. But that's the only difference that I would do. But it's really nice because now I'm choosing the maps for the Nightmare Dungeons to be the quickest and I'm running them as quickly as possible. And it just makes it feel way more rewarding because my glyphs are just getting just massively leveling up. I'm getting even more powerful and I can feel that versus doing it in early Nightmare Dungeons when I'm like in the level, you know, 20, 30, 40. It just, it's just slow because the glyphs are so costly. And then the feeling of how many you have to do to get, you know, to take level like sigil level 30 and get your levels to 15 or even 21 is insane. But taking sigils 90 plus and taking those to 21 is way faster. So that's what I would do. 
then in some point, whenever I feel like it, there is going to be great uniques that I can go and target. Because the bosses are actually designed to have certain drops, I can literally go find what uniques I want and then go boss hunting. So now I'm leveling up crazy. I, mean, I have a plan for going after my Glyphs and my Nightmare Dungeons. I'm starting to target bosses early. I'm running hordes for the experience. I am going to come out by the time I hit level 100. You know, in many cases, actually, my builds, by the time I hit level 85, I had all the uniques. I had full 925s. I had mostly greater affixes. I had all my glyphs. It's just, it's really insane. So just to make sure that is super clear, we're going to come into World Tier 4. We are going to hit the Nightmare Dungeons to collect our glyphs. Then we're going to the hordes immediately. We're not leveling the glyphs. We can level with what we have, but don't even worry about that. We're going to Infernal Hordes, and we're just going to blitz through our leveling. Uh, make sure you're using your potions or whatever else boosts your experience. Then after we get to a decent level of power, we probably have all 925s, even some greater fixes from the, all the stuff that we get from the rewards of the hordes. We then can go back and do much higher levels of Nightmare Dungeons and get those glyphs leveled. Then somewhere while we're doing the leveling, we can also look into bossing and targeting the gear, that, the unique gear that we want. This will give you the highest run into endgame and allow you to keep pushing the tier levels, start masterworking, and then start even hunting for your mythics or what we used to call them, uber uniques. So one of the things that I am probably happiest about in the way the game is going is that I finally feel that I have the ability as I'm leveling, even if my build isn't perfect, even if I don't have all the aspects, even if I don't have the uniques I want, that I can do something to make sure my build doesn't suck because they've offered what I call debugging options. There's way more choices to basically make things the way they should be. If you're dying a ton and your armor is low, well, we can temper armor. If you're looking over here at your res uh, your resistances, you can then temper resistances. You can also put the gems in, which has always been a feature, but that is another way you can target. You can put the gems in that give you the protections that you're looking for. On top of it, if you are looking for you're not clearing fast enough, there's all kinds of things for the tempers that you can do. Additionally, paying attention to what the potions do. So one of the things I did, I, as you build most builds, the Paragon points are going to help you out and just kind of pushing levels are going to help you out with some of the resistances you need, but they don't come online early. And even the gear that you would, you have, maybe you're actually, you have the right gear. If you master worked it and you have the resources to do that, you'd have full resistances. But if you don't have that coming down and actually making the potions or let's the incense, this is one that I definitely pay attention to is this one, the increased resistances to all elements. It also even gives a maximum resistance to all elements by plus one. So you can now go to 71 <laughs> rather than just 70 for your max. And you even get that little bump to armor. So it is crucial that we are trying to get as much of the 85% protection we can and that we're having full resistances. Generally, if people are getting one shot in endgame, this is where it's coming from. But I just love this. If your build is too slow, you can you can master work the gear. You're not just waiting for the next possible drop or you can actually do a temper that works. It's just it's a much nicer ecosystem to say, hey, I'm just going to I'm going to aim toward the thing I want. I don't have to wait till I have all the pieces perfect. I'm going to start putting together. And it also causes you to learn your build better and know where you're going to get more damage and know where you're you know, you're going to have your best defenses. So the next thing is something that I think a lot of people do not really think about, but it makes a huge difference. We talked about early going after your uniques. And so that's generally getting the bossing materials and then going to the boss spots and loading them. But if you can do a tormented version and hear me out, <laughs> I know you might not be able to solo one yet, but if you can do a tormented version, you pay three times the cost of mats, but you get five times rewards. Way easier time of getting the thing you want and increases massively the chance you may actually get one of your mythics. If you can get a mythic, game changes. Like for the most part, it at least sets you in the right direction to for most builds to do something that's absolutely insane. They have made bossing so much better, but there is one issue. Most people are running infernal hordes to get materials to masterwork and they've run out of materials. And so even early on, if you can acquire the materials to run a tormented, it is not hard to find someone who's willing to do a carry. You know, most times I just like, I would get in there and was like, I want to see if I can do it. You know, I'm playing soft core, so I can just run at it and see what happens to see if I'm even close. And if I wasn't, it was one comment away. It's like, hey, any, I have already paid for tormented Varshan. Anybody want to carry for a free ride, you know, like or whatever it is. And so they get another chance at Mythics. They get a chance uh, at running it, even though they're out of materials. So it's a pretty easy time to get people to come in and help. 
If you are also in a clan, you know, obviously asking your clan first and starting to create a relationship. When you get more powerful, you start getting those mythics or you start getting your gear really high level, you know, just give it back. Help some other people that are doing the same. But this is such a great way to get the best gear and high rolls of it even early in your progress through bossing. So I have yet another thing for you guys because it matters a lot. I love hordes because of choice. Hordes have a crazy reward system at the end because you get to choose what you want. So I just want to talk a little bit about what to choose when. So obviously early on in World Tier 4, you're trying to get your full set. You know, you're trying to get 925s, you're trying to get greater effects, you're just trying to get your gear and the aspects that you need. So early on when you're doing Infernal Hordes, it's really great just to dump everything into gear because you can then break that down and start making sure that your Codex of Power is complete. And that is a great strategy for targeting the things that you're missing because a lot of people get into endgame and, you know, gambling is way weaker than it's ever been, so it's not a good place to get your things. And then you're just waiting for random drops. Maiden is still pretty solid for aspects, but Hordes is great for leveling, it's great for gold, it's great for just everything that you need in one place other than leveling glyphs and getting boss materials. So if early on you can do that, you can get all your aspects, you can also get the gear you need. Now, at when they say the, it's tier three and it says monster level is 100, that's when you're going to start consistently dropping like only 925s. So if you get to that point where you're pushing through world tier four, then you get to that level, then you can clear out and get all the gear that you need and have the highest chances for greater fixes that you can control. You also open up the greater affix chest. So there's a big chest. It costs 60 in the middle, has a much higher chance for greater fixes. Uh, I have noticed that generally if I open a bunch of the little ones, it's pretty close. I can get greater fix in both, but it's a one time shot. So go ahead and try that if you are hunting for gear. Another great thing that opens up in tier three of the hordes is that you also get the materials for masterworking. So from this point on, one of the most rewarding things is going to be that if you have your gear, if you have your aspects and feeding into material, because not only does it give the things for masterworking, it also gives you your gems. So it gives you the dust to make the gems that you need so you can get the highest level of gems you possibly can, which can be a huge jump in power. And then lastly, major gold. Um, and if you're really low on gold, you can even do a run just to feed everything into gold. So at first I'm looking at gear and when I'm trying to target things, I might still run gear. But as soon as I'm just consistently trying to get myself more powerful, I'm usually moving over to everything I can to materials and then what I need in gold. I will do ongoing, especially if I'm doing a ton of masterwork and I'm not complete with it, I'll put about a third of what I get in ether into gold to make sure that I'm getting a ton. So hands down, probably the most powerful thing outside of getting mythics in endgame is going to be masterworking to the highest levels. If you want to take mythics and make them insane, it's masterworking. And so I actually went and did a video as an experiment. I took a class all the way into endgame. I have not touched it with masterworking and live with you. I go through and do exactly what I would do and explain what's going on. So you guys can get a first hand experience of what it looks like to take your masterworking to the next level.